I'm Darren Alexis, and welcome to a 20-something survival guide, the place where you and me learn to survive and thrive in our 20s and beyond. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Today, we are finally talking about finding your personal style. You guys have been begging me for this episode, like... Over 20 people have requested it, but I've been waiting and waiting and waiting until I found the perfect person, and I finally did. So I'd like to introduce (laughs) Jordan Hardman, who is a fashion and lifestyle content creator based in Orange County, California. She's also the co-founder of Two Bold Creative and the owner of The Match Concept, which is super dope. So I will drop all of that information down in the show notes so you can check her out. She's one of my style icons, which is why I finally felt it was the perfect time to record this episode. So Jordan, did I miss anything? No, what a great intro. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. I'm excited. I love your podcast. I love your content. So I'm I'm excited to talk about this today. Yeah, I'm super excited as well because I originally found you while scrolling on TikTok and I was (laughs) looking for a fashion content creator and I'm like, damn, this girl is amazing. (laughs) So I gave you the follow. I've been watching for a while. And so I'm just super excited to chat about it because I'm not the most versed in fashion while my friends think I am. I'm not. So I'm glad I brought someone that is cool, trendy and knows what she's talking about. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Of course. First, I wanted to ask you, could you describe your personal style? Yes. At this very moment, I'm very into the 90s style, like Rachel Green, Monica Geller, Carrie Bradshaw. Like I love the the midi skirts, the old Levi's jeans, the rolled up sweaters, like any 90s style is like, I'm just obsessed with right now. And where do you find your inspiration from? Do you mainly take it from social media or the other areas that you pull from? You know, I have a hard time answering this question because I want to say like social media and Pinterest and stuff, but every time I'm scrolling Pinterest and I'm like, that's cute, save that, I want to recreate that. And then I recreate it. It just looks terrible. So I'm like, I think I grab it like throughout weeks and months. And then when it's time to get dressed, I'm like, well, that'd be a cute idea. So I do think it's social media, but it's not like A to B, you know? No, definitely. I love that you said that though. I feel like so many times we're just so bombarded with like all the different trends or like what you're seeing on Pinterest. And then when you're trying to put it on yourself, it doesn't look the same. Or yes. It kind of clouds your judgment of what your style is. Exactly. So do you have exactly. any tips on how to really find and curate your style instead of just mimicking everyone else's? I mean, I think that like both can be true. You can like Mm -hmm. almost mimic or like take inspiration. You know, you see a girl on TikTok styling sweaters and you're like, oh, I'm going to try it like this or like that. And then kind of like make it your own. Like I follow this girl on TikTok who I just love her style. And I'm like trying to almost recreate that. And I'm like, it doesn't look the same on me. We have different bodies. That sweater does not fit my body the way it fits her. So taking that inspiration and then just like making it your own. Like I see a baggy sweater looks good on this person, but on me, I, I just feel a little frumpy. So like finding those things that actually make you feel good and then another part of that I would say like having your go-to outfits like if I'm PMSing if I'm having a bad day like I know what I can wear that I'm like yep got it let's go having those go-to outfits which for me can sometimes be a baggy sweater and sneakers or if I want to feel a little more girly just kind of depends on the day and when you say making it your own what does that mean to you yeah I think like Adding your own flair, I guess, like your accessories, layering or whatever it is that makes the most sense to you. For me, I don't feel like my style is necessarily like preppy. So sometimes if I'm like layering like a a button up or something, I'm like, this doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Something's not right where I I would kind of like twist that and put like a t-shirt under or something like that. So just putting it on, feeling comfortable and also feeling confident enough to be like, yes, I'm rocking this. Let's go. Let's start the day. No one's going to look at me weird. Like I'm just going to go get my coffee and do my thing. So That's awesome. Do you have any specific style icons? I know you were saying you like the 90s, but is there specific creators you follow that you really like that you want to give a shout out to or celebrities that you feel like kind of help you encompass your own fashion? Yes. I love that question. I do have a couple of creators I absolutely love. I don't know if I'm going to say her name right, but Kazia Cook on Instagram, everything she posts, I'm like, I want to wear that. I want to do that. I want to do that. And then uh, Lauren Miley, Miley on TikTok. She just has like really cool style, easy to recreate and like kind of make your own. Awesome. 
I'm curious, like as an influencer, because I know sometimes you get things sent to you from brands. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that has changed your style or do you feel like your style is ever impacted by that? No, it's definitely changed. I think maybe at one point almost like made me feel a little lost if I'm being honest. You know, yeah. like you try to recreate these super cool pictures and I'm like, well, I need this like really dress for this or like this would be really cute. Or, you know, I saw this girl wearing this and trying to recreate that and then being like, wait a minute, like, is that for content or do I actually like that? So I think there's like a fine line between that. But I think since I was able to work with such cool brands and like kind of do that stuff, I was able to find my style in the process. No matter what brands I work with, I still love my thrifting and finding those like cool pieces like that. And can you talk a little bit about how to build out your wardrobe? So you said you like to thrift and mm -hmm. you like to do these different things and work with different brands. So I know some people have like signature pieces that can like help reflect your individuality. So do you have any tips on how the listeners can do that for themselves? Yeah, that's a great question. I think at the base, starting with like your go-to pieces, like you have your jeans, mm -hmm. you always look good, like a dark wash, a light wash, your good basics that like, you know you can build off of. You have a white t-shirt, you can throw on a cool statement jacket over. So having those basic pieces will help you be able to build out because that's, that's the key to any outfit, you know, have your base. And then from there, I think finding what pieces speak to you, whether it's like a funky jacket or like a ton of accessories. JD Bird's also someone I want to shout out because if you look at her accessories, she could literally have a t-shirt and, and shorts on and she's got the coolest accessories. I'm like, that's her, that's Jade, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, starting with the base and then building out to like fun pieces that are not your like everyday go-to. So would you consider that kind of like a capsule wardrobe? Because I know there's like hot yeah. takes on a capsule wardrobe. People like either love it or they're like, that's so stupid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think whatever works for you, you know, I personally like would get bored of that, I think. Like I need a little more like yeah. oops in my wardrobe, but I think it's important to have those pieces too, obviously, because it's it's never going to like go on, a, go on a trend, you know? So I want to ask, I know you were looking for like the perfect white tee recently in one of your oh, TikToks. Yeah. <laughs> Did we find it? Is there a brand that the listeners should look for that has the perfect white tee? Because I know yes. so many are like see-through or thin or like they pill. Yes. Or... <laughs> so the one I got ended up being from Zara. I went to um, Aritzia, Zara, Madewell, J. Crew. I think somewhere else, but she got around. Not, I went around. I was going to the mall with a plan and none of them really worked. And I ended up getting the Zara one because it was perfect for like layering at the bottom of a sweater and stuff. And it was like $12. Um, so I posted that TikTok and everybody said Uniqlo and then cause C O S. I'm not sure how you say that, but those two were like the secret sauce for white tea. So I got to go back to the mall <laughs> and try those ones. But yes, apparently Uniqlo is like, everyone was commenting that. So try that if you're looking for a good basic. I have never been there. So I don't even think they have one of those in my mall. But then oh, again, really? I'm not in California. I'm in Ohio. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that I'd have to buy it online. And is this yeah. just like a basic tee or is it more an oversized look or it's like a what are we boxy with? white tee that hits like at the perfect spot, like right above the waistline. I am a little shorter. So finding that stuff that like hits perfectly right there is like the secret sauce. <laughs> so I will go find it for you. I will let you know how it goes. And then if you want to order it online, great. <laughs> Yeah, please do. I know yeah. we talked a little bit about accessorizing and going mm -hmm. to thrift to find some pieces, mm -hmm. but do you have any tips for using color or incorporating different textures and patterns to enhance personal style? Yes. I'm obsessed with color theory right now. Like all things color theory. I think it's so fun. Like I'm outside and I'm seeing somebody wearing pink. I'm like, oh, maybe this shade would look better with this skin tone. Like it's just so fun. So I think color theory is a great way to start if you're looking for your style. Because I was growing up, like I was wearing black, white, and neutrals. Like I did not like color. My hair, you can't really tell on camera, but it's red. And I was like, I don't want to look like ketchup and mustard wearing yellow or like Christmas <laughs> wearing green. And the older I got, I was like, okay, maybe color isn't that scary. And now I realize my colors are like royal blue and like fuchsia. Like that makes me pop. And I would have never known that. Yes. So I think that is a great key to finding your personal style and like what works for you. There's a lot of videos on TikTok of girls that I've seen that um, will post themselves before and after doing their color analysis. And it's like night and day. They look like they're just popping and glowing. And it's like, oh my God. So I think that is great. Mixing 
textures with basics is great. Patterns with basics is great. I know people love mixing all of it together for more like a fun eclectic style, but yeah, I think Mm -hmm. the key to a really good outfit is your basics add in some fun textures and layer on accessories and you're good to go. So when you're talking about the color analysis and Mm -hmm. color theory, have you gotten yours professionally done or like how have you figured yours out? (laughs) I, um, I went to my photos and I clicked the color of my skin, my eyes and my hair. And I took that, um, hex number and I went to chat GPT and I said, what is my color? And it was so cool. It tells you everything. And it was like, wear this, this and this and do this. And then I know that contrast filter on TikTok's like blowing up right now about if you're a low, medium or high contrast, which is um, yeah. actually really cool because it kind of like talks about the way you like do your makeup and if you're, it's too harsh for your skin tone and stuff. Uh, but yeah, chat GPT is the secret. My gosh. I'm going to have to try that one out because I feel totally like I'm should. always stuck between like two different seasons. Yeah. And, like, I don't, cause I'm also a medium ca- contrast. So it's like a little bit harder. I feel like, cause my it boyfriend. Is yeah, he's a winter and it's just like so clear what hit like yeah. everything he looks good in because he's so mm-hmm. pale and has like dark features. Yeah. And me, I'm like, ooh, I don't know. Am I an autumn or am I a spring? I don't know. Maybe we're the same. Right. Just take the picture, like a selfie and natural lighting yeah. and then pick the hex colors and then it'll tell you it's super cool. And so since finding your colors, are you mm-hmm. trying to only shop within your colors or are you like still kind of liking whatever you like? No, I think liking whatever I like, but knowing that like, if I want to go for a blue shirt, that color blue would be a lot better, you know, and make me pop a little bit more. And you also notice, I think I get a lot more compliments when I'm wearing those tones. Yeah, Like it really definitely. does make you pop out more. It's crazy. Yeah. I think that can add a lot to confidence too, which yeah. just has so much to do with finding your personal style. Totally. Um, and I know you were talking a little bit earlier as well about how you're short. So sometimes it's, mm-hmm. or your torso is short or something. So it's hard to find yeah. certain things. Yeah. Do you have any tips on how to dress for different body types just to help listeners feel more confident in what they're wearing? Yeah, absolutely. I know like, um, rise in jeans is a big factor and it's also a big trend like I know high mm-hmm. rise was huge a couple of years ago low rise is a lot bigger now but I didn't really realize like where my body fit in that because I was like oh I love high rise like I feel like it you know sucks yeah. everything in I feel comfortable but now that I'm kind of getting older and realizing what works like a mid rise is really good on me for like where my hips sit um so I think that's really good to find out like what shape looks the best on you and that can elongate your legs or kind of whatever you're looking for and then pairing that with the right boot, like a short boot always makes my legs feel a little bit shorter. So going for a longer boot with like a skirt makes Mm -hmm. me feel like I've got, you know, Bella Hadid legs. (laughs) That's awesome. Um, And how can the listeners refine their personal style on a budget? I know we talked about thrifting. Do you have Mm -hmm. any other advice on that? I do. I actually have a friend, Lauren, who started a company called Refound. And this is kind of big on social media in general, but she's like, the most talented thrifter. It's basically you pay them and um, it's her and the girl Sienna and you pay them and they go thrift for you. So you fill out a form and it's like, give me your Pinterest board, your sizing, your style icons, all that stuff. And then they go find it for you and mail it to you. And I did it when I went to Spain recently. I wanted like Carrie Bradshaw, colorful, and they absolutely killed it. I posted a TikTok about it, but I think like Thrifting is very intimidating, especially if you don't usually thrift. It's like, where do I start? You have to literally sift through every single thing. So I think that's a really cool idea if thrifting scares you, but you also want to tap into that. It's not very expensive. And then from there, you can kind of maybe get the confidence to go try it yourself because it it definitely is intimidating. I had to get my friends to come with me the first time I went thrifting. I was like, what do I do? (laughs) I feel like I really struggle to find pieces sometimes too. My best friend Kelsey also has a thrift account and she just finds everything. I don't know. Um, Some people just have the eye. I know. (laughs) Really, really have the eye. Um, it's a super cool talent to have. So I think Mm -hmm. like utilizing that, if that's something you guys would be interested, it'd be really cool. Thank you for sharing. And do you ever upcycle your pieces or reimagine them? Cause I feel like that's another way that is really good to work within your own closet to stay on a budget. Yeah. Um, I would like to do that more. I have a pile of stuff I want to take to go get tailored or go get fixed and stuff. 
but my best friend actually sews. So I'm like, hey, like, can you do this for me? Um, but yeah, I think that's a super budget friendly way too, especially if you already know how to sew or I know sometimes you don't even have to sew. You can kind of just like cut the sleeves off and, and like what you said, reimagine it. So I don't do that as much as I would like to. I don't know if I'm creative mm-hmm. in that way, but I think it's a really cool way to do it. And are you the type of girl that likes to buy a new outfit for every event or do you like to use what you got? I think both. A little uh-huh. bit of both. Like I went to Spain <laughs> recently and I was like, your girl needs new clothes for Spain. Obviously we're going to Barcelona, but like for weddings and stuff, I'm like, I have so many dresses. It's silly to keep buying new stuff. So it just depends on the event, I guess. <laughs> and what are the favorite stores that you go to or just different brands that you look at for inspiration as well? The first one that comes to mind is Cezanne. I think that's how you say it. Um, it's French. It's um, just has like cool basics and J Crew. I've been loving their sweaters and stuff recently, while those are a little more on the expensive end. I also always love Zara, Princess Polly, Verge Girl, the Australian brands never miss, but I guess a little bit of everything. I think it's really good to have those because I haven't even heard of some of those. So I'll definitely yeah. have to check those out as well. Yeah, I'll send you a list. <laughs> Please do. And yeah. because this is a 20 something podcast, I am mm-hmm. curious, has your style evolved a lot in your 20s? And can you talk oh us gosh, a little yeah. bit through that process and how you felt going through the different stages? I don't even recognize the early 20s version of myself. So I'm 29, almost 30, got two more months <laughs> left. But it's it actually is really crazy how much my styles evolved. And I even think that my like 22 year old self seeing myself now, I'd be like, what are you wearing? Because like I said, I used to only wear like all black and white. And that was yeah, the basics. Yeah. Probably like 20 to 23, 24. And then I kind of got like out of that a little bit. And I mean, even like COVID, I mean, who yeah. had a lot of style during COVID to be fair, but even then I look back and I'm like, what are you wearing? Which I might look back, you know, in three years and feel the same thing, but it's definitely changed a lot. I think that happens with trends naturally, but also like, I think there's something special about your late twenties and finding yourself and your personal style. Like it is like a very beautiful thing when your brain develops and it's like, oh my gosh, like I <laughs> love this stuff. Not because it's trendy or just because like I love it. And it's, it's really cool finding those things. And do you feel like along with that, your confidence has developed too? A thousand percent. Even in the last year, I think like tenfold. And that's with like my style, my friendships, my relationships. It's like, yeah, definitely. And do you have any tips? I guess we kind of talked about this a little bit, but how to really find that confidence within your outfits? I mean, I think it comes from being confident in yourself. You know, if Mm -hmm. I'm in an outfit that I wouldn't normally wear and I go to Target, I'm going to be like, oh my God, everyone, everyone knows I can't pull this off. Like I'm not <laughs> this girl, but just being confident and being like, yeah, this looks good on me. And I feel good in it. End of story. You know, and it obviously takes practice and work it doesn't happen overnight, but just like knowing that you look good and just owning it and even faking it till you make it sometimes like you can trick yeah. your brain and being like, hell yeah, we look good. You know? Yeah. I think that's something that I have struggled with. Like when yeah. I was just in my twenties, I feel like I was wearing a lot of like very cropped outfits, mm-hmm. like very like tiny things. Yes. And now that I've gotten older, like I really love like I mean, still sometimes I wear like a low cut, but I love like the modest dressing that's still like sexy and mature. And I think a lot of that, yeah, I think a lot of it has come with, I am still kind of in a corporate job and Mm -hmm. (laughs) I know we've seen people like making fun of like, oh, like the office siren, like you can actually wear that to work and stuff like that. So has, have you seen that within yourself as well? Yes two things to say. One, the office videos cracked me up because at my job, <laughs> I did marketing for PacSun, which obviously like no one there was wearing suits and stuff, but like people yeah. would wear like sports bra and sweatpants. So I'm like, those videos are funny to me when everyone gets mad because I'm like, yeah, that is also corporate, you know, it just depends on the company. So it's funny. Cause like I would wear absolutely whatever I wanted, the crop tops, all that stuff. But yeah. I have so many crop tops in my closet from, I just don't even touch. So I'm like, I don't feel like I also feel like that also goes with the the high rise jeans. Like I'm not really wearing super high rise as much anymore. Very so valid. Like, yeah, I don't know. I just I agree. The crop tops really like had a phase and it was fun by my early twenties, but now I just like kind of deter a little bit away from it. Like I'm like, I want like a longer cut shirt and like my torso covered. <laughs> so I totally agree. 
That's so funny. Yeah. Um, I know another thing that a lot of the listeners struggle with and a lot of people submitted questions for was kind of learning how to break free from style ruts or just feeling uninspired. So do you have any tips on that? Yeah, I think um, something that helps me, I know some of my friends is like having an ongoing Pinterest board of like cool fall outfits or like summer stuff you'd want to recreate. And then when you feel in that rut, kind of going to that and like, you know, going off of those things and getting some inspiration there. That's something that really helps me. Cause like this, this past week, I don't know if it's PMS or something's going on, but I'm like, I look so bad. Like clothes aren't looking good on me. And I've gone to Pinterest or those girls on TikTok I mentioned earlier. And I'm like, okay, I need some inspiration. Like, where do I start these jeans, this wash, that kind of stuff. So that's, that's been really helpful for me whenever I'm in a rut. Yeah, I think that's a really good tip. And something that I personally have tried a lot more recently, too, is trying to find creators and people on Pinterest that look similar to you. Mm -hmm. Because as we were talking Mm -hmm. about, like sometimes like I'm a size 12. So someone that's a size two, you're not going to look the same when we're trying on an outfit. And even if you're both a size two, you're not going to look the same, like you said earlier. Exactly. So just trying to find people that kind of fit more so your body, your mold, Mm -hmm. and the types of styles that you're looking for. Absolutely. Such a good tip. I know on Pinterest, you can change that now too, which is super cool. Like you can do skin show and body fit. Yeah. It's super cool. So like they'll only pull up inspiration that fits what you're looking for. And that's why I think it's really cool to find like and follow creators that have your body type, you know, like petite, petite style or like size 12 style, like whatever fits the mold, seeing yeah. that and being like, wait, I could do that. It looks good on me too. You know? Yeah. That's awesome. And yeah. do you have any tips for the listeners that might want to get into like being a fashion and lifestyle influencer themselves? Yes. Just start, <laughs> just start posting. If it's something that you find fun or exciting, just start and you're going to find yourself along the way. And I promise you're going to look back and be like, what the hell was that? Because that's <laughs> just life and that's how it goes. Like if you guys could see some of the pictures I was taking in the beginning, like I had to archive them because they were so bad, but just, you don't have to have a whole new closet to start. You can find what you have. You can make it fun. You can even make a TikTok account about your journey. I want to be in a fashion. Here's where I'm starting. Let's do it together. Like people love following that stuff. So just starting and you will figure it out. But I guess going off that, my best advice would be you have to love it because it is a lot of work. It does take a lot and you have to be passionate about that. Otherwise you will get burnt out. So find what you love. If that's fashion, if it's jewelry, if it's anything else, just, Mm -hmm. just go for it. How long have you been in the space? Has it just been, I know you celebrated one year of quitting your corporate job. Congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) But has this been the first year that you've been doing content creation and focusing on fashion or has it been longer than that? It has been longer than that. So I've always worked in the fashion space. I was at PacSun for a total of six years. Then I left for a year to do influencer management. So I kind of saw how everything worked behind the scenes. Um, Mm -hmm. And I started my account like March, 2022. So it hasn't even been that long. I just kind of wanted a creative outlet and a fun way to style things and post pictures that I liked and stuff. So yeah, I've always kind of been in this space, but on the creator side, it's still, you know, two and a half years, not too long. So yeah. Yeah. And where do you kind of hope to go from here? I just hope to keep growing and building a community. It's just been so fun. And I just am excited to to keep it going and and see where it takes me. Like you said, it has been a year of me doing this, which comes a lot of ups and downs. You know, I think Mm -hmm. being a creator on social media comes with a lot of comparison. So I do think it is great to be confident in yourself because you are going to question stuff. The most confident person will. It's just how it goes. You're like, well, this worked for her. Should I be trying that? Or this outfit looks good on her. Should I do that? And just kind of reeling it back and being like, no, that's not like authentic to me, which is, it is hard to do, but I do yeah. think the comparison side definitely got to me this year. Like my my first year doing it, it's been my main income. Like I'm at home all day making videos and I'm like, you know, questioning yourself. Getting past all that is super important. And I've definitely worked on that and just growing my accounts and being creative and having fun and just kind of seeing where it takes me. I'm excited. Do you have any dream brands to collab with? Oh, I do. I just signed with a new management company. I sent her over a list of like 50. I was like, I want to work with all these. (laughs) 
But the one top of my head, um, Coach, I've worked with them before and they're just absolutely amazing. I work with Aerie a lot. They're great. I would love to work with an airline. I love traveling. Oh, Big part of my yeah. life. That would be a dream Me club. Too. Yeah. Be that so is cool. awesome. I would love to know from your perspective, what do you think is the most yeah. challenging with finding your personal style? I think for me, as I said, I've struggled with the confidence aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, I really struggled when I was 20 and getting into my career, finding mm -hmm. outfits that were work appropriate and still mm -hmm. felt like me because yeah. I felt like a lot of times I kind of had to shift into a mold because everyone at work was wearing like pants suits or mm -hmm. just things that I would never feel comfortable in. Like yeah. for example, um, I worked an event when Biden came, I was working at a, at a college. And mm -hmm. so I went out and I had to thrift a suit cause they're like, you have to wear a suit. Oh my gosh. And I just felt so uncomfortable in it. Yeah. Everyone's like, Oh, you look so cute. But I'm like, it isn't me. Yeah. So and you I feel, feel it really is <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, maybe it looks good, but I don't feel like myself. And that's like, yeah, yeah it's always not a fun feeling. Yeah. So I feel like I've struggled to kind of find pieces that feel like me. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that I feel like I've struggled with a lot has been kind of sifting through the noise. Cause I think I'm on social media so much that I feel mm -hmm. so influenced by so many different trends and other yep. people's styles, but then the trend dies and I no longer like the piece, which means yeah. I probably never liked the piece. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to personally learn now, like when yeah. I should take a piece of a trend and make it my own yeah. versus when I should just kind of like, Oh, that's cute. Like yeah. it, but I don't need to go buy something. I think that that's something we probably all struggle with on social media. Yeah. I know that's something that I <laughs> definitely dealt with. A big example is the, the Boston clogs. I saw them and I was like, oh my God, so cute. Sort of for her fall. And then I was like, I had to step back and I went, do I actually like these or do I just want yeah. them to be so trendy? I ended up sitting on it for a while. And then I was like, no, I'm still thinking about them. I still want them. I got them. I love them. I wear them all the time. But taking a step back and being like, do I need this? Do I like this? Or yeah. is it something that like I'm just following, which is so hard to differentiate because like your brain's like, yeah. Oh my God, the new cheetah pants or this red sweater, like so cute. Like I need no, it. Exactly. And then being like, do I need it? Or <laughs> Yeah. And that's so funny you brought up that example specifically because my boyfriend got a pair of those and I was making fun of him at first because he had yeah. bought them right when we moved to the East Coast. He's like, I'm living in like Connecticut. East Coast I need them. <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, this is not you. Like he usually wears like Converse all the time. Yeah. So I'm like, like, do you need those? And then I started wearing them just to like slide yeah. on and walk out of yeah. the house. And I just became obsessed with them. So great. They go with everything. Yeah. They're amazing. That happened I to know. me too. I got my pair and then my boyfriend was like, wait, I want a pair. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> I've been sitting on these for like a year. You can get your own. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. I think it is fun too, to like, if you have a partner like mm -hmm. bouncing off each each other's styles totally. I think is really cool too. Yeah. Does your does your boyfriend like to like dress up? Does he like fashion at all? He does. He's got cool style. Um what I said this earlier, I think, but whenever I'm PMSing, I don't know what to wear. I want to be comfortable. I will go to his closet mm -hmm. and just get a big sweater and then throw on like sneakers and shorts underneath. Sometimes I will go and steal his clothes, but he's also a foot taller than me. So I gotta find the ones <laughs> that are a little too small on him. Uh, but yeah, I think that's such a fun thing too. And I think that it's so cool, like what, 15, 20 years ago, it almost was like abnormal to dress like masculine if you're yeah. feminine style or whatever. But I think now that's kind of out the window. So like bordering that, it's not weird if I wear my boyfriend's shirt now, you know, so having fun with that is, is cool. Yeah, that's like probably one of my favorite things too, is just mm -hmm. being able to look at all the different styles. Because I feel like we're slowly and finally getting to the point where like all styles are cool. So like some people mm -hmm. really gravitate to the sixties, some gravitate yes. to the nineties. Yeah. So I think now more than ever, like is a great time to really just focus on finding pieces you do like and making mm -hmm. them your own. And as you said, there's so many different ways you can make them your own by accessorizing, mm -hmm. layering, trying different colors. So yeah. that is beautiful. Yeah. I think there's something special about uniqueness too and like making yeah. it your own like no one's gonna look at you weird they're actually gonna probably be like wait that's cool I want to try that like it is it is hard to do but it is a definitely cool aspect yeah and I think 
to something that I've struggled with and I know my friends have struggled with is putting so much pressure on ourselves also to mm -hmm. be unique. Mm -hmm. If that yes. makes sense. Totally. Like totally. if you want to be basic, quote unquote, basic, I feel like I'm pretty basic. <laughs> like sometimes basic. my, yeah, sometimes my style isn't a hundred percent my own. Cause I do pull inspiration from other yeah. places and that's okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, that's so normal. And like, I know my friend has struggled with this a lot too. She has a ton of tattoos. She's super edgy looking. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, she stopped wearing pinks and colors because she's like, it doesn't go with, you know, her mm -hmm. aesthetic that yeah. she was trying to create. Yeah. And more recently, she's just decided like, this is what I like. This is who I am. And I'm going to wear great. it. I love yeah. that. That's so cool. Do you think that you and your friends have a lot of the same styles? Like, do you guys share a lot of stuff or would you say you're all pretty like different? <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe like along the same lines, one of my best friends, Alexi, she, I just, I think her style is so cool. Even when she's like, oh, I just throw this on. I'm like, dude, you're wearing the coolest outfit. We went thrifting <laughs> yesterday and she had like brown silk pants, these like vintage cowboy boots, this blue and white striped button down, this beautiful jewelry. I'm like, oh my God, like you look so good. So I think sometimes when I'm getting dressed, I'll think of her and I'm like, what would she wear? Like, I just think her style is so cool. So sometimes I can catch myself like gravitating towards that. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody in the world has like their own style all the time or their own thoughts or like yeah. all that stuff. Like yeah. you're with friends who have similar style. You see it online, you pull it from Pinterest. Like it's so normal to do that. So don't feel like you can't think like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think just like putting your own twists on it and stuff, but. Yeah, that's so important. And I feel like too, just not feeling like you have to sit in one aesthetic all the time. Totally. Like you totally. can switch it up every day. You can switch it up in seasons. You can switch it up in mm -hmm. different years of your life. Like yeah, it's fine absolutely. to do that. <laughs> I love that you said that too, because I think like with content creation, I definitely think that I'm like, hey, well, I like yeah. this, but like, does this fit my vibe? And I'm like, well, it does because it's me and my page. So it is my vibe, you know? Yeah, that's so true. That's, I think that's funny that you said that because I was actually telling my friend the other day, I was like, oh yeah, I'm having Jordan on the podcast. And I was yeah. looking through your feed and I'm like, it's so cohesive. It's so oh, cute. God. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, everything matches. You have the fall vibes going on now. So oh gosh, I think we're just so, so hard on ourselves because you I mean, never know what other right people are. Yeah. yeah. You never know what people are saying about you. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. You really You're don't. your own hardest critic. You so are, just, I think just our brain is like, just, I don't know what that is in our, in the human brain, but it's like always go to the worst or always think someone's talking yeah. bad about you. So you don't realize how many like silent fans you have. They're always like, oh my exactly. gosh, I'm going to go to her page for inspiration. I'm listening to her podcast for this. Like if you can even just have that for one person, it's like so cool and rewarding. So just don't forget that there's people that support you that don't mention it. You know, I love that. Yeah. I do have one more question to right. ask you if that's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so one thing I ask all my listeners is your number one piece of advice for 20 somethings. Oh God, I have so much actually. <laughs> this is like I said, I'm turning 30 in well now yeah. less than two months. And I have done so much reflecting on my twenties in the past few months. Like, who do I want to be in my thirties? What do I want to take to my next decade and stuff? And I think number one thing for me is surrounding yourself with your people. If you have friends that, you know, you're questioning or you don't think are a good fit for your life, like you can, you can cut them out. You don't need to be around people that just make you feel shitty. I think that's number one. Number two is not being so hard on yourself on where you need to be in life and who you need to be yeah. because it's going to come naturally you're going to figure it out, especially in the career world. I think your twenties is a time for figuring out what you want to do. And I don't think there's any right or wrong answer, especially in today, today's day and age. You don't need to be a doctor to be successful. You don't need to do all those things. You can, you have a lot more avenues than our parents even did. So I thought I could go on for like another hour about this subject. <laughs> but yeah, I just think not worrying about the unknown because there's always going to be unknown and just surrounding yourself with people that make you feel good and make you feel happy. And then I think the rest will always come. That was beautiful. And I appreciate mm -hmm. any guidance you have. I can't even imagine how it feels to be 29. That's in a oh few years for me. <laughs> being able to like sit back and look back. Is there yeah. any memory from your twenties that just like really stands out 
is something that like really impacted you? I, I traveled a lot in my twenties. I ended up quitting my job like two or three times to go travel around Southeast Asia. And I moved to London and I like beep bopped all around the world. And I think that like, it's so cliche, but like that changed my life. Like that made me who I am and like seeing so much around the world. I'm like, what am I worried about in, in what <laughs> world? Um, yeah, I think I, I absolutely love that. And I wouldn't change that for the world. And I think yeah. going off that part of me almost felt behind because a lot of my friends started their mm -hmm. career and I went and traveled and, you know, I'd come back and they were getting a promotion or making more money. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm so behind. And then my mom was like, yeah, but you went and traveled. Like you did these things. Like, would you rather have not? And then like been the same place. So just reminding yourself that like, you're not always going to be where your friends are. You know, they're always going to be either ahead or behind or whatever it may be, the societal norms. But yeah, well, long story short, traveling. <laughs> no, traveling is so important. My next yeah. episode is actually about traveling. That's oh, like my number one passion. So anytime that. you can get out and travel, yes. go travel. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast Thank you today. For having me. I love yeah. this. It's so fun to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to talk to you too. Listeners, make sure to check out Jordan. As I said, I'm going to drop all of her information in the show notes. So go give her a follow. She has some really good advice and cute stuff. <laughs> She's Thank definitely you. one of the people. <laughs> I pull my inspiration from you all the time. Oh, I think you posted so something with cowboy boots and I'm like, I need cowboy boots. Yes. Love cowboy boots. <laughs> and now I have a red pair and a black pair. So thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. That makes me so happy. They go with everything. Yeah. <laughs> they really do. I didn't expect it. My boyfriend yeah. was like, why do you need cowboy boots? And I'm like, oh they're God. just cute. No, they go with everything. They're so fun. So I love that. Yeah. Love if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Share this episode with any of your girlies that need some fashion advice. As always, love you guys, and don't forget to survive and thrive. <laughs> so cute.